For this wine making tutorial, you're going to need 100% juice with no preservatives, two cups of granulated sugar, kitchen sugar, and packets of yeast. You could use a half a packet for a gallon. This is baker's yeast and this is wine yeast. Baker's yeast yields 14%. This wine yeast specifically EC118 or 1118 yields 18%. And this, the only difference is, well, obviously this produces higher alcohol content. And it's more specific for wine, but this will do just fine. The taste is probably a little tiny bit worse, but not much worse. This will do perfectly fine. I prefer this though because I like a higher alcohol content. And this is my cat. Please check your package. Some yeast likes to be hydrated. This goes between 104 to 109 degrees. I personally do not like hydrating the yeast in hot water. So what I'm going to do is pour about half of this gallon into a boiling container, such as this pot right here. I'm going to let it boil and it's going to get to about 104 to 109 degrees which is enough to hydrate the yeast and it can just hydrate and the apple juice alone because apple juice does have water in it. As you can see, I'm, I'm starting to, to boil it right there. In the meantime, I'm going to pour two cups of sugar. to mix into this apple juice. I'm gonna shake it very well so that the sugar is fully dissolved. And you will know it's fully dissolved when you check the bottom and see that there isn't sugar on the bottom and it's just uniformly mixed. Also, uh, solids dissolve better in warmer water, so when we mix in the boiled apple juice, it's going to definitely help dissolve the sugar even more. So that's a, that's a bonus. When your juice finishes boiling, pour it into the room temperature juice. It should uh, raise the temperature to around 104 to 109 degrees Fahrenheit. If you want to double check, use a thermometer. A thermometer will tell you if it's too hot, and if it's too hot, I mean, it's gonna kill the yeast, right? Actually, I don't fucking know. Here you go. Oh yeah, please don't make this if you're a miner. Shake it again. Make sure everything's all nice and mixed and temperature reaches an equilibrium. Also what I like to do, the test I like to do is, if you go into a hot tub, you'll feel how hot it is. And hot tubs usually go up to about, probably around 110, comfortable, whatever. You dip your finger in there, and if it's not hotter than a hot tub, then you're A-OK -okay to go. Weigh about half a packet of yeast. This packet has five grams, so you want to weigh about 2.5 grams of yeast. Pour your yeast to the apple juice. You want to keep the lid shut tight until you start seeing bubbling. Avi, you can make red wine too. During fermentation, yeast excretes alcohol and releases carbon dioxide as a gas. Open the lid enough just so you can hear the carbon dioxide escape, such as there and there. 
within a few hours, your juice should start slightly bubbling. Within eight to 12 hours, the yeast should fully dissociate and start rapidly bubbling your drink, as you can see right here. Here. These are obviously about half a day to a day old, and it's gonna continue rapidly bubbling for a while. This is about one week old, and the bubbling's slowing down a little bit, but it's still going pretty strong. This is two weeks old. Notice how these are very milky, and this is, has its color returned back to it. After about two weeks of fermenting, your wine should have about all the alcohol content it's going to get. If you let it sit for a while, it will increase slightly in alcohol content, but not very much. You can start drinking it right now after the two weeks, but it will not taste as good. And also, with young wine, it can leave have a very off odor. So, for best results, I would at least let it sit for around a month or two. And three months is good. The longer you let it age, the better it's going to taste.